hard to find in the shadow of IU Health's largest hospital. So food options play a key role in the new IU Health District project. And one possible solution already operating there is News 8's government reporter Gary Berquist found out. There's a lot more to it than simply opening a store. Cleo's Bodega has become a lifeline since it opened four years ago. The people who run it say the key is to not just open a store in a food desert, but to make sure that the people who live there know that it's there. If you wouldn't buy it, take it off. Every morning, Cleo's Bodega manager Nicole Green looks for expired produce. This is a lot more than a simple inventory check. Unless you have a car, I'll say I'll give it within a 10, 15 mile radius around there's nowhere else to get fresh produce. The store sits near the intersection of 24th and MLK, right in the heart of a food desert. Green says about half of her customers don't have a car. There's a older lady, she lives right across the street. She doesn't have a car. We're the only place she can get eggs. Lack of affordable fresh produce plays a big role in a host of health problems, including obesity and diabetes. According to the USDA's food atlas, much of the area immediately to the west of IU Health Methodist is a food desert. That's an area where at least 100 households are more than half a mile from the nearest grocery store and have no vehicle access. There's so many people that I hear come in and they say, I didn't even know this was a grocery store or I didn't know you guys were here. The plans for the new IU Health District include a proposed food production facility to serve at-risk populations and neighborhoods. Planner House CEO Brandon Cosby says if that food is going to reach people through bodegas, word needs to get out. The habits of shoppers are very difficult to interrupt to create new patterns and new choices. Um, so doing community outreach, you know, making sure that we have a strong social media presence, uh, being able to do direct mailing to targeted areas in our zip code and in our catchment area. Cosby says involving the community from the beginning is even more important. Simply adding mixed-use development doesn't cut it. If you haven't done any of the real authentic engagement to really you know, take into consideration the hopes, the dreams, the needs, and the desires, and the aspirations of the residents, um, that's not something you're doing for the community. That's something you're doing to the community. He recommends following a model like Cleo's. Flanner House owns the building and the land on which it's built. Plus, they're a nonprofit. That means they can sell food at prices the community can afford and not worry about paying shareholders. To have a small store like this is not very profitable in the beginning. It's more so about giving back to your community. So you have to have more people that actually want to care for one another. Cleo's used a community development block grant to help cover startup costs. Once word got out, the store was able to support itself. There you go. You don't want a receipt? All right. Green says she's sending more direct mail ads to people who live nearby. And she brings in different types of produce to encourage people to try new things. For her, seeing people who need healthy food find it is its own reward. I love service in my community. I do. It makes me feel great. Flanner House's CEO says they're working on expanding on this concept. They're finalizing plans for a 14,000 square foot grocery store a few blocks away. I'm Garrett Bergquist for Wish TV, wishtv.com, and like us on Facebook.